Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of another day, we thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for all that you've done for us during this day, the things that are seen and the things that are unseen. We take nothing for granted, Father God, and we know that the earth is yours and the fullness therein. And so anything on this earth you would not withhold from us. So as we come together this afternoon, to praise and worship you, to hear your word, Father God. We pray that you will touch our hearts and draw us closer to you. 
that we will go further along our journey of salvation and have a more intimate relationship with you or maintain our intimate relationship with you, Lord. We thank you for the friends you've given us. Thank you for the shelter, the health, and the many things that we enjoy that we take for granted. So we come this evening to praise you and give you thanks, Almighty God, for you are the God of abundance. You are the God that provides. You are the God that shines your banner and shows us the way. So let us pray that we hear and feel your presence. We pray that we hear and feel your presence this evening, Father God, and that we, when we leave this place, we'll say it was good that we were with our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. is taken from first peter chapter 4 verses 1 to 13 since therefore christ suffered in the flesh arm yourselves also with the same intention for whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin so as to live for the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires but by the will of god You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excesses of dissipation, and so they blaspheme. But they have to give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed, even to the dead, so that though they had been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. 
Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be the may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for glory when his glory is revealed. This is the word of the Lord. on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust Good afternoon, Christian friends. It's a pleasure to be with you on this platform. And this evening, I'm going to be sharing a word entitled, Love is a Secret Source. And it's based on 1 Peter 4 verse 8, which says, Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come in this time in our fellowship, and we must hear a word from you. And I pray, Lord, that your servant will be the agent of that word, that your word will go out through me with clarity. It will be a word that touches, a word that uplifts, a word that brings hope, a word that strengthens those who are faint or weary. And so I pray, O Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart will be acceptable in our sight, in your sight, O Lord, our strength 
and Redeemer. Amen. Love is the secret sauce. Now, growing up as a child, I recall that I had a love for ketchup. Anything I ate, I would want to put ketchup on it because ketchup always made it taste better. Well, almost everything. Because I had some friends who would put ketchup on egg or ketchup on Chinese food. I still have not come to terms with that yet. But, and, oh, yes. And you know, in the Caribbean, we like to put our ketchup on pizza. Well, as I discovered when I was in my teens on a trip to Italy, putting ketchup on pizza is an insult. I still remember the look and glare that my sister got when she insisted on getting some ketchup to put on that finely made, wonderful Italian pizza. The chef could not, could not come to terms with it. It's the same way if you went to a gourmet restaurant and ordered an expensive steak, you would not want to put ketchup on it because it's overpowering and masking the true taste of that fine steak. Just like how the ketchup was going to mask the true taste of that finely cooked Italian pizza. So as we grew up, then, the kind of love we put on our food, it had to mature because ketchup, okay, yes, it masks and things, but we really want to taste our food. So we move from ketchup to those secret sauces. We all know those secret sauces when you put it on something and it made it taste so well that you're wondering what is the secret ingredient and the chef will just be there. That's a family secret. Hand it down from my grandmother. You're not going to get it. Just enjoy it. So those secret sauces made everything better. But the owners never shared the recipe. Now what does that have to do with our reading from today? But today's key verse tells us that love covers a multitude of sins. And just like how love covers a multitude of sins, it's like how that secret sauce we put on our food will make any meal taste good. And we can't imagine eating our food without it. Our passage for today starts off in 1 Peter 4, 1, which says, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same intention for whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin. This verse is like an exclamation mark to the previous chapter in 1 Peter chapter 3 where he talked about suffering for doing right and keeping our tongues from speaking wrong things and keeping all reverence. So the previous chapter, chapter 3, was telling us that Jesus' example showed that we will suffer in doing the right thing. After all, we are flesh and we are trying to put on the spirit. And if we are putting on the spirit, we are getting rid of the flesh and getting rid of the flesh is a painful thing after all it is easy when you don't know something you know, when you don't know something it's easy when you don't know or you're ignorant you you go and you pay someone to do it or you turn a blind eye so for instance to me say okay i don't know how to drive i'll pay the driver a little something and pass my my exam that's the easy way out, paying to get it done. But the better way and the harder way is suffering through learning the topic and overcoming your ignorance. It is better in the end. Because eventually, if you pay to drive, people will find out it's going to cost you a lot. The amount of cars you're going to bounce. And you may even lose your license. So, suffering to replace the flesh with the spirit is the same sort of suffering you go through as replacing the darkness in our lives with light. But that is the price we have to pay to ensure that we follow Jesus and follow what 1 Peter 4 tells us, where it says you no longer live by the word of the flesh, but live by God's will. And as, a, and as our passage today tells us, when you do that, you will have a surprise menu because you will do many things that were unexpected. You're going to be that surprise. You know this dish that you looked at it and when you tasted it, you said, wow, okay, this didn't look so good, but wow, okay, it wowed me. Many wonderful things are going to happen. You're going to see miracles when you suffer and put yourself out. Just think of the widow who gave her last bit to Elijah 
And in doing that, the little bit she had never ran out. That is a miracle. So when we do things out of the ordinary and we understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein, we get to experience miracles in our lives because we allow the Holy Spirit to crucify the flesh and we live in the Spirit. And living in the Spirit is what will allow us to tap into God's bountiful blessings and see all the miracles in your life. But that is all well and good. Yes, when you want to do a little suffering because you're studying, because you want to get a big degree and get a big job and all these sort of things. But then you may come again and ask yourself, what is it that would possess a man or woman to willingly go out there and suffer for the sake of others? I mean, you're suffering for the sake of yourself and getting money, but suffer for the sake of others? What would cause a human being who would naturally want to watch an enemy who's suffering and say, good for them, they deserve it. And instead of that, they lend that enemy a hand. Especially when offering that enemy a hand costs them something. What is that secret ingredient? That secret sauce that turns the bitter tasting human who wants revenge into a sweet morsel. Where that secret sauce is love. And our key verse today emphasizes it when it says in 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Love is what removes the bitter taste of the flesh and replaces it with the sweet taste of the spirit. The secret source of love is far more effective than the surface coating putting the, or putting the plaster over the sore or the sweet talk and mama guy. That you may give someone, you know, in, in the Caribbean, we have mama guy, koyo mouth, whatever we call it. But when you tell somebody something just to boost their ego, but you hide the truth from them. Which is more like putting ketchup on something. Because the ketchup made it taste good, but the sauce thing, the core thing, the meat, the sausage or whatever, wasn't good at all until they put the ketchup on it. So, that mama guy, ketchup masks the true flavor. So when you see something wrong and want to jump in and just make things go away, you're not helping. It's the same way, if I give this example, you want to, you see the drug addict comes in church and you just want to give them, look, take $5, take $2, take $10, even take $20, just get out. That's not helping. You're just helping them buy more drugs. But... If you went out your way, gave them something to eat, help them get cleaned up. And I mean, rehabilitation is not an easy thing. I've heard experiences from people who work in rehab centers. It is not an easy thing. But you're putting your life on the line so somebody can be saved. That is the secret source. When you just give them $20, you're just giving them catch up and say, go away. So... Secret source, the love, requires us to go beneath the surface. To change in the ingredients, change in the core meal. And I tip my hat off to persons who sacrifice time, talent and treasure to run these free rehab centers and get people off the street and rehabilitate them. It's definitely better than people who try to force holiness on people without understanding their situation and instead of making them become holy they just force more guilt and shame on them and drive them away from the church so we know to be those people we are you know the bible tells us we are the salt of the earth and we have to mix with sinners we have to season them with the secret source of love and see them miraculously transformed but being the salt of the earth is not an easy thing I like sea salt, and we know seawater is salty. But would you put seawater to season your expensive fish? No. You would need to first filter that water to remove the impurities, then evaporate the clean seawater to bring forth the salt from it. That evaporation process is not easy. But when you taste something seasoned with some good sea salt, you can't ask for anything better. So, the effort and filtering and evaporating and all that work to extract this little sea salt was worth it. And so it is with us Christians as our God goes through 
us with the help of the Holy Spirit and through salvation we get through faith in Jesus Christ when he does the work of transforming us into salt. Now guess what? When God transforms you into salt, it's better than sea salt, you know. Salt, because you will be transformed in salt, into salt that can flavor anything. And yes, you will bring a spectacular result. But the process of becoming that salt of the earth, that secret source, is not easy. And our passage today warns us, because as we read a little passage, in fact, if we read into the end of our passage, 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13, it says this, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. When you come out as to that secret source and that sea salt, you know, all that suffering looked like a distant memory, you know, like the suffering David had to go to before he came king or Joseph in prison. All of that was a distant memory when God's glory is revealed in you through the suffering. So this passage today is telling us, don't worry about the suffering in the salt making process, but focus on the glory. Like those Olympic athletes who get up day after day and train hard in hot sun, especially these days where it's hot, hmm, because they see themselves mounting that Olympic podium and receiving their gold medal. That's what motivates them. Don't look at the suffering. Look at the glory in the end. So Christian friends, do you want to be ketchup that just glosses over the flavor of life and gives us an artificial flavor? Or do you want to be like the secret source of love? Now, there are three things that you could do. The first thing you have to do is you have to put aside all desire to live for your flesh. The flesh might seem tempting. It may be enticing like fast food until you go to the doctor later and find out about the cholesterol or cancer or high blood pressure and other ailments that that fast food bogged you down with. The fast food of the flesh has no depth, substance or flavor. It has a lot of preservatives, so you don't have to, so you have to purchase a lot of ketchup to put on it to make it sound good. This fast food life that we are getting drawn into, no, it will do us bad in the end. So put away the fast food and take up some more nutritional and flavor-filled food seasoned with the secret sauce. So that's the first thing you have to do. If you want to be that secret source, put aside the desire to live for your flesh. Because that flesh ain't carrying us anywhere. It may just seem good for a while. The second thing you have to do is make up your mind to suffer so that you can do God's will. Growing up, all the teachers made me say the following poem. Or in my primary school, I remember saying, The heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward through the night. Anyone who had to attain anything of value had to sacrifice and suffer. Whether it be a doctorate, a gold medal, promotion at work. And our salvation is worth much more than those things. So what suffering are we willing to endure for God to purge out all the bad flavors in us and turn us into that secret source? Right? What are we doing? So if we want to be that secret source, we put aside all desire for our flesh. We make up our mind to suffer so that we can do God's will. And the third thing we have to do is clothe ourselves in love. When you love someone or something, there's no sacrifice that is too great or small for that person or thing. Love is the secret source that makes everything taste better. And as the Bible tells us, love covers a multitude of sin. It's the ultimate secret source. So let us all desire to be that secret source and go out there and season the world so as i conclude as christians we sometimes gloss over our sins and the sins of others when we treat with the sins of the flesh on the surface it comes like we are just putting on ketchup to mask the bad taste of sin but we want to remove every bit of sin in us and this requires us to season it with the secret source of godly love 
That means that we must go through the transformation to become the salt of the earth that can season and remove the poor taste in anything or anyone we encounter. And to do this, we must do three things. Put aside all desire to live for the flesh. Make up our mind to suffer so that we can do God's will and clothe ourselves in love. 1 Peter 4, 8 tells us, Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Love is a secret source that covers a multitude of things. So go out there and greet everyone you meet with the secret source of love and watch them be transformed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your Son to save us and you brought the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, Father God. Help us to submit ourselves to your will and commit unwaveringly to following your word, no matter what the sacrifice may be of pride or whether we have to sacrifice finances or we have to sacrifice getting what we want or we have to forgive 70 times 7, whatever it is, let us not lose sight of being in union with your word, Father God. Help us to be obedient. Help us to endure all things. Help us to lean on you in the face of trials and not want to gloss over things or do the fast food or the quick and dirty ways of the world. But let us commit to the sustainable and long-lasting sanctification that comes through your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you have done in our lives and the dead things you have rejuvenated in our lives. And we hope for the things that you will remove and bless us with in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.